Ladies and gentlemen, you have been connected to the Spandana Spurti Lim Financial Limited Q2FY23 earnings conference call. Please stay connected. This conference will start shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been connected to the uh, Spandana Spurti Financial Limited Q2FY23 earnings conference call. Please stay connected. This conference will start shortly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Spandana Spurti Financial Limited Q2FI23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shalab Saxena, MD and CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Shazan. Good evening to all of you. Thank you for taking time out to join the call. Thank you for showing interest in our company. Friends, over the past two quarters, we've been trying to steer Spandana towards the path that we had articulated for the organization through the vision 2025. Suffice to add, we are moving on the right path. We have received tremendous support from all of you, all our stakeholders, which is lenders, shareholders, employees, and our customers thus giving us the confidence of achieving what we set out to achieve by FY 2025. Friends, quarter two was a quarter of consolidation. We are measuring our steps and taking prudent calls to ensure that the next level of growth for the organization is on a robust foundation. With this, let me move to the quarter two results. While the results have been uploaded, and I know there are some technical uh, challenges uh, on the site, but uh, BAC it was uploaded, I think, slightly more than an hour back, and NAC also it is more or less there. But I'll take you through the results and brief highlights. I'm happy to take questions now or uh, from tomorrow. So while the results have been uploaded, I would want briefly to take you through the same. So let me start with the first point, which is on ratings. Spandana's rating was ratings watch until quarter one. Post the various developments in the operating environment, all the three agencies have dropped the rating watch. Our ratings now are India rating, it is A stable from rating watch with negative implications. Crystal, we are A stable from ratings watch with developing implications. And Ikra, A minus stable from ratings watch with developing implications. So this was one of the highlights of the quarter. The second highlight, and here I would want to just build on this, which is the borrowing story. 
one of the key challenges that we as a management team had was to start the borrowing cycle from our existing and new lenders together as a team that was a single important task that we had committed to ourselves more so because this is the primary driver for fueling our growth plans we have made the right start we've onboarded 10 additional lenders two new and two new first time lenders we borrowed during the quarter 1080 crores against 155 crores in quarter 1 and 308 crores in quarter 4 of fy22 the marginal cost of borrowing has decreased from 14% in q4 of fy22 to 13.1% in q1 of fy23 to 12.64 in quarter 2 of fy23 which is the last quarter so 14% to 13.1% to 12.64% this quarter banks and capital mix market the mix is 58% banks we've in our past through various interactions with all of you we've kind of articulated that we would want to take this number to a number starting with 7 so we are on track for that apart from this our liquidity position was comfortable with 964 crores cash balance as on september 30th in the quarter many lender doors opened for us quarter 3 holds equal promise on the financial performance our q2 results are presented here with total in- income a total income this quarter was 311 crores this is an increase of 20.1% compared to q1 where it was 259 crores on the net interest income the net interest income is 219 crores an increase of 35.2% compared to q1 net interest income of 162 crores our yield in q1 was 16.4% in q2 it is 19.5% which is an increase of 310 bips compared to the previous quarter cost of borrowings the in the quarter we had our cost of borrowing was 11.2% which was 11.8% in the previous quarter which is a decrease of 60 bips compared to q1 profit after tax we have declared is 55 crores as you are aware in the first quarter we had declared a 220 crores of loss on the business side let me start with the various elements starting with member acquisition all of you are aware and we have repeatedly said that our focus or our growth strategy will be driven by the member acquisition story we acquired 1.23 lakh customers during the quarter which was a growth 16% over the previous quarter we have said that our growth story will be customer acquisition led and hence we are building the blocks both culturally and identifying pockets of growth to further our plans on the disbursement side we disbursed 1391 crores as against 1320 crores in the previous quarter which is a growth of 5% and if i look at a yoy which is quarter 2 of the previous year it was 1150 crores so yoy it's a growth of 21% on the aum our book has increased by 5% from the previous quarter this is a trend reversal since the past few quarters we had a declining aum trend on the portfolio composition because this is a very important our portfolio composition all of you are aware comprised of two books or rather three books post april 21 and pre march 21 our book composition has changed from march of 2022 the post april 21 book which was 48% and the reason why i am mentioning the post april 21 book is that this is a new book post the covid era it has and i'll uh, while the uh, you would have seen the numbers but we'll uh, spell out the numbers you know the portfolio is behaving well it is a new book so it is in line with what one would expect of a distribution house like spandana so the post april 21 book which was 48% in march 
became 70% end of quarter 1 and is now 82% in quarter 2. So the post COVID sourced book is 82% of our total portfolio. The new portfolio, as I said, is exhibiting good collection efficiency and hence assumes criticality. By end of quarter 3, it will be upwards of 90% and onwards. We have a book of, as I said, now of 5,782 crores, of which 4,730 crores, which is 82%, is giving us a net collection efficiency of 97.5%. This is slated to improve over the next couple of quarters. The pre-March 21 book, which is 1,052 crores, which is 18% of the overall book, is giving us a 88.7% net collection efficiency. This is excluding arrears. The residual book post write-off taken in Q1 is showing strong asset quality. We'll continue to pursue quality growth. Friends, you are aware, we've articulated in various forums our desire to strengthen our rural portfolio. Happy to announce that we are at 88%. Our overall rural portfolio now has increased to 88%. We will continue this journey because that is where the tier 3, 4, 5 or rather the Bharat of India, which we have already articulated, is very much a part of our vision 2025 where we plan to grow. On the collection efficiency side, our total book, which is the entire book, irrespective of the splits, has or is delivering delivering us a gross collection efficiency and gross as you are aware includes the arrears gross collection efficiency of 101.3% and net collection efficiency of 93.3% the provisioning position we are adequately provisioned the potential recovery upside from the written off book is a plus we've recovered 15 crores from the written off portfolio in the quarter in the previous quarter we'll continue to pursue this for the next two quarters we anticipate reasonable upsides in this and we have clearly articulated plans on how to engage with these customers and bring them back into the mainstream the consolidated gnpa is 7.47% the net npa is 3.96% the total provision that exists on the book is 303 crores, which is 5.23% of the EVM. On the balance sheet, net worth of the company is 2,861.67 crores, with a capital adequacy of 45.3%. Our liquidity position remains strong. As on 30th September, as I said earlier, we had a cash and bank balance of 964 crores, which was almost equal to 4, 4x of the required monthly liability. We have a diversified borrowing profile and are further deepening our relationships with new and existing partners. So to summarize the results and the way forward, we are moving as per plan. The lender's confidence, disbursement, member acquisition, portfolio quality are moving as per plan and in the right direction. We anticipate clear roads now for business. Spandana has a great distribution and a very good team of brand staff in the field and in HO. We are proud of them and like in the past, we are confident that they will build a solid story on towards our vision 2025. We are strengthening the team at HO at the senior and middle management. We have had five CXO levels joining us over the quarter. I will give you more update on the people story in the next quarter. Similarly, we've enhanced the board with addition of two more illustrious board members, Mr. Animesh Chauhan, former MD and CEO of Oriental Bank of Commerce, and Mr. Neeraj Swaroop, former regional CEO of Southeast Asia and Singapore Standard Chartered. We are strengthening our board also to ensure that we move towards a more professional setup. On strengthening the organization, we added 300 loan officers during the quarter. Given the trajectory of growth that is required, we are planning to add another 752,000 loan officers in the current quarter. We continue to make progress on various technology initiatives which have been highlighted earlier. Our risk, audit and control teams are being strengthened as we speak. Thank you very much for the patient hearing. I will repeat very humbly what I said in the last call. We are playing a test match 
and this is a cricketing parlance example we are playing a test match and not a t20 we are building the organization we have a task to deliver we remain focused on our goal which is vision 2025 thank you once again i have the management team with me and we are ready to take all the questions thank you very much fazan over to you thank you very much we will now begin with the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time First question is from the line of Jignesh Shyal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good uh, evening. Am I am I audible? Yes, 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 Jignesh. Yeah, good. Uh, 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 thanks for the opportunity and congrats on you know, for the uh, decent set of numbers. Uh, just a couple of questions I had, but you know, firstly, I can see a, you know, a pretty good improvement on the on the margin budget. Shyal, the audio is not coming clear now. Uh, request if you can. Is it again. is it better now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So I, as I can see, there is a, a sequential jump or a you know, improvement on the on the margin trajectory side, uh, which is from 9.9 to roughly around 13 plus. So uh, what what will what, how do you see it? Uh, you know, planning out to be in the coming quarters, because if I remember it correct, we we have been guiding for somewhere around 10% sort of a margins. So, uh, do you, do we see that numbers to come down, or or this will be the the new trajectory you're looking out for? Uh, hi, Dignesh. Yeah, uh, I have Ashish with me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Dignesh Ashish here. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the question. So, uh, 13 percent, yes, uh, is uh, uh, the present name. Uh, uh, we have discussed this uh, last quarter, and uh, our uh, um, Uh, guidance was that you know we are looking at names to you know be north of one and a half percent, and this should continue. Understood. So this this is the new trajectory, and uh, uh, considering that the borrowing mix has improved significantly, and expecting it to continue, we we should see similar kind of margins going ahead also, right? That's right. Correct. Yes, and and uh, just to give you a color, uh, Jignesh, we uh, moved to the new RBI framework on the first of July, where okay. we increased our rates to 24% uh, okay. with the repo rates which have been going up, and there is a further uh, this thing. We will, uh, or rather, we have increased our rates by 1% uh, more, and we intend to stay put now for uh, you know for the next couple of quarters. So this is more in line with the market. So the Uh, reduction in the borrowing rate has to be looked at in the context of what is happening in the market, and uh, uh, you know obviously our our reach out to the and the support that we are getting from the various lenders. Understood, understood. So basically, we have a dual advantage whereby the cost of one side basically is coming down, whereas the rates moved up, and that is basically uh, flowing into the margins. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, uh, you know, obviously there had been uh, sequential surge on the uh, stage three, as well as if I see it on the overall book net or collection efficiency has also dipped a bit from 94 to 93.3. So this is uh, you know, overall book I'm saying about originally. I mean, post April 21 is pretty stronger. So how do you see that trend? And can you can you give some more color on it on the stage three as well as on the collection efficiency side? so uh, let me answer this more holistically and we are ready to uh, happy to take uh, detailed questions sure we, uh, there was a time when we were uh, reaching out to the customers because uh, there was some disruption on the data side and hence we had to go and we collected a lot of errors so, so you know so the past results have to be looked at in context the current result also if you see the gross collection efficiency of the book as i mentioned somewhere in my commentary it is at 101% Uh, the point you are making is correct it has dipped a bit but then it is a temporary phase because uh, uh, we have been kind of uh, you know doing multiple uh, we've been doing um, uh, managing multiple priorities 
from a customer point of view and the quality of customer point of view we are completely engaged with all the customers and a few bits here and there uh, including flows if you remember the last time around we had said that while we will we might have we might see a few flows here and there but overall the quality of the book is now reasonably under control more so with every quarter you know when we start, when we see the customers will attract because they would have expired their contracts of 24 months with whatever tail is left uh, at 82% on the new book end of quarter next you know we will be probably with a number starting at 9 i think you know we should uh, continue to see uh, both in uh, percentage terms and in absolute terms you know improvement so is it fair to see uh, or or um, you know considering that overall your pre 21 book april 21 book is being uh, getting consolidated or gradually you know should see a uh, repayments and recoveries is it fair to assume that collection efficiency post april 21 would be a new benchmark to keep an eye on it so any benchmark forget a pre or a post a microfinance book has to or should deliver upwards of 98.5% minimum hmm. Okay. So that's the number that we are targeting at a book stage. Any number that starts with a with a double line is what we aspire to. Uh, I think you know we should see those days uh, very soon. You know when we uh, hit a quarter four or towards the end of quarter four. So you know uh, a microfinance book, a quality book should deliver a 98.5, 99, 99.25 kind of a number. Understood. This is pretty pretty helpful. Secondly, um, also just quickly, if I can get. um how the moment has happened uh, you know uh, uh, do you explain uh, in your initial mark but uh, if if i can just get a, a moment of how opening uh, sequentially how the opening disbursement and repayment has happened and if there is any write off during the quarter if you can give me that kind of number that will will be really useful uh, there has not been any uh, write off uh, so okay. there is uh, basically we Uh, we have a uh, monthly repayment so the book uh, you know uh, and and uh, average maturity of the book is roughly about uh, 16 months or so so mm. that's uh, that's how the book kind of runs down so our disbursement for the quarter has been 1391 crores mm. uh, and most of it was uh, uh, towards the end of the quarter and uh, uh, has uh, the relative impact uh, this much So the balance would be your repayments only, since there is no write-off, correct? Yeah, that's okay. Right. Okay, perfect. That's that's really useful. Uh, thanks a lot, and all the best. Thank you, Jignesh. Thank you, Jignesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Shah from Ambika FinCap. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi team. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. I just have one question. Uh, so, are you still maintaining your disbursement target for the current year of eight thousand one hundred crores? Yes. Uh, because in uh, just uh, first half we have delivered around about of uh, around twenty seven hundred odd crores. So, it still yeah. has to be really good for. Yes. So, Dhruv, Dhruv, let me explain. I go back to what I said at that time, and I'm just repeating what I said. we said in the first quarter uh, we will disburse 1200 to 1300 crores the second quarter will disburse 1400 to 1500 crores quarter 3 will be 2500 crores quarter 3 will be 3500 crores this was the narrative this was the quantification of the uh, you know the plan that we had and we are sticking to the plan okay so great that's it for my side thank you so much <clears throat> thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Nidesh from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Sir, so two questions. Firstly, uh, uh, your margins have now reached uh, normalized levels. Credit costs have also reached normalized levels. How should we think about ROA? What is the operating leverage uh, uh, we should build in over next couple of years? Uh, and what will the uh, uh, normalized ROA that you expect from this business? yeah so um, we would talk more uh, from a perspective of you know the normalized the bau or you know maybe um, uh, when we are fully uh, uh, fully uh, in a bau we if we are talking about couple of years down the line we uh, aspire to be in the range of you know 4 to 4 and a half percent kind of a roa uh, when the leverage and uh, uh, everything will play out that's the kind of roa we are looking at Uh, 
Hello. Adesh, did I answer your question? Uh, this? This is the operator. Yeah. Yeah, for example. Nidesh, your line is in talk. Please go ahead. Yes, sorry. So uh, just a follow up on this. So uh, the incremental uh, kicker on ROA will come from which uh, line item of PN? Because I think the only lever that we have left, which is left from this uh, earning, uh, this quarterly uh, performance, is on the OPEX front, OPEX two AUM. Uh, I think uh, there are uh, two other levers which we have not talked about. One is we we uh, expect the uh you know the cost of borrowing is also to uh, come down further one two uh, we uh, if you look at the yield uh, presently the yield is at 19.5% but on a ideal basis if i have to look at the yield it should improve uh, uh, at least another 100 uh, to 150 basis points uh, given that we uh, we are coming out of covid and there is a book which uh, has a, a you know some uh, bit of uh, uh, you know overdues or whatever as uh, this book you know kind of winds out uh, your yield should start improving having said that uh, uh, shalab kind of uh, initially covered in his commentary that you know our new disbursement will be at a higher rate of interest uh, the uh, the h2 disbursements is going to be at 25% rate of interest and this should start playing out by Q4 and should have a positive impact on the uh, on the yield, uh, which will also drive your ROA. Sure, sure. And second question is on the asset quality, uh, basically on the collection efficiency. Uh, on the new book, uh, the collection efficiency is around 97.5 percent, and I think on the old book, uh, the collection efficiency has deteriorated quite sharply in this quarter versus last quarter, uh, because on the new book, the collection efficiency has remained stable and the share of new book has gone up. So how should we think about uh, 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 the incremental credit cost? Because we still have 4% net NPA. And uh, uh, my, uh, my belief is that uh, that may lead to higher incremental credit cost in coming quarters. How, how, how do we think about that number? And how should we also think about the 97.5% election efficiency on the new book? Um, uh, so this is the way we looking at it is, yes, there has been six slippage uh, but this should not definitely result into you know uh, losses uh, the engagement with the customer is there um, uh, between 1 to 90 book if I look at 95% of the customers have been engaged with us and have paid more than one installment during the quarter so clearly uh, um, and and uh, uh, we earlier in the call we have explained that we are uh, bringing in more <coughs> uh, more field force on the ground which will help us do some focus drives on the ground to address uh, the engagement issues, more to say. The customer has shown intent. Uh, it is just that uh, we need to, you know, uh, be little more engaged with them for, uh, for you know, better uh, 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 outcome. And this should start playing out uh, from this quarter onwards. So our strong belief is that, uh, you know, we will, uh, we will, be able to uh, improve upon uh, whatever the marginal slippages that have happened in this quarter. Uh, in, in Q3, you should start seeing uh, a much better uh, kind of outcome uh, from, from the book. Uh, just to supplement, Nidesh, uh, uh, if uh, we presented it in our slide 13, if you see all the stages, there has been a slip in the 90 plus. Uh, uh, of which the new book contribution in the fresh slippage is about 0.29 percent. Rest everything is old book. So I'm not saying there's a problem with the old book. The old book uh, are the customers who are very well engaged, and that's the reason why we hold on, held on to that portfolio. If you see the other uh, other uh, stacks, which is stage one, both in the current the one to 30, stage two, you know, there we've seen some improvement. One can argue that there has been a slippage from there into a greater than 90. Yes, sure, but uh, from uh, but from a pure play uh, quality of the portfolio and the customer and the engagement levels of the customer, I think we are comfortable and we hold on to the, the story that we kind of uh, narrated uh, when we were uh, decided to take the right off. We were clear that uh, you know the set of customers who we thought was not worth pursuing is what we decided to uh, you know write off and the others are customers through our various uh, analysis and our engagement and our field report they are fine so you know so these flows 
here and there we will uh, we will still see them between quarter 3 and quarter 4 but from a uh, uh, from a uh, you know a real damage perspective i i'm i don't think so you know so we are we, we maintain what we said for cost so uh, incrementally we should not expect any elevated credit cost uh, 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 from, uh, from the current book no so we had we had said that the new book uh, on a stand alone minus the covid if you remember the q4 results that we presented we said it's going to be under 2% it is going to be half of that you know is my uh, intelligent guess uh, on the new book part uh, we are uh, on the old book either way you know it is a trifling because you know we are seeing the all those customers are seeing the end of their loans number 2 number 3 is from a provisioning perspective we are well covered in terms of you know if at all there were some slips were to happen but overall uh, you know i we do not anticipate any uh, you know anything which uh, would happen or w- uh, would lead to a uh, uh, to a deficiency in the judgment that we had you know when we kind of walked this path so to that extent i think you know we are good the slips the slips and the flows given the nature see we have to we have to uh, consider that uh, as a company we have a uh, almost 98 99% which is a monthly book you know, monthly repayment so it is difficult for the customers to really uh, uh, you know move the reverse bucket once they really slip and that's the challenge that we have uh, so that we are kind of uh, at least q2 was very very critical that we kind of reasonably managed to uh, wait i think q3 q4 with the decline in that book plus the overall engagement levels i think we should be fine sure sure uh, thank you sir thank you that's it for my side thank you nidesh thank you the next question is from the line of renish from icici please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, congrats on a good set of numbers uh, so sir just uh, one question on this uh, you know the 18% of aum Uh, which is thousand plus crore. Uh, now, if I by calculate the collection efficiency on this eighteen percent, it is roughly around seventy five to eighty percent. I mean, uh, let's say eighty two percent of the book is having ninety seven point five collection, and when we have a blended collection of ninety three, that eighteen percent of the book uh, should be around seventy five to eighty percent of the collection. Uh, and when I look at the stage three assets, uh, it is around four twenty. So, sir, what is happening with this six uh, hundred crore of, of the balance book? Uh, because of that, also restricted book is hardly anything. So, if you can help me with some reconciliation uh, on this thousand uh, uh, crore book, you know, uh, which is the pre-March book, pre-April book, sorry. Yeah, hi, Ranish. Uh, Ashish, this side. Uh, the yeah. collection efficiency on the eighteen percent book is eighty-eight point seven percent. This is the net. Uh, this is the net uh, collection efficiency. Okay. Yeah. and uh, uh, hello so so that that is the number i mean if that is what you were asking for 88.7% will be the collection efficiency on the on the old book uh, the the simple averages when you do do the disbursement on you know the four i mean uh, this will not actually give you the right uh, color because not all book uh, would have had any dues in the current quarter right i mean so collection efficiency is what was due uh, vis-a-vis against that how it was collected so as you go forward you will see this number you know kind of improving uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, because because the book which has been disbursed in this quarter was uh, like i said was uh, disbursed primarily towards the end of the quarter we'll see uh it's dues and recoveries you know in the coming quarter only uh, ranish just to give you some numbers on the question that you asked the net collection efficiency of the pre march book is 88.7 and mm-hmm. the gross collection efficiency is 97.2% so it has to be looked at in context of the of the mm-hmm. narrative that we've been saying that these are the customers who are uh, you know who are paying but with a lag and with a arrear obviously given a monthly uh, uh, liability that they have it is difficult for them to really clear off their two or three installments hence the pace is slow not what you or i would want or not what we would definitely want but i think you know with a 
uh, you know with a re, uh, re, uh, with a declining book and we are able to hold you know a 97.2 on a gross i think you know and a net also if i see at a 88.7 closer to 89% i think we are there okay so uh, again just a follow up okay so in this 1000 crore okay uh, only a uh, 400 crore is stage 3 and 100 crore is, is restructured so so balance 500 crore uh, i mean are you seeing this book as a stress book or uh, do you see this will uh, recover over a period of time this uh, will repair and that's why i said you know so this the reason why it is here means obviously it was not a regular book you know otherwise it won't be here having yeah. said which uh, it is not something that we can uh, you know sort of uh, uh, kiss goodbye Uh, we have uh, great uh, engagement with each of these customers it is just that there is no way they can jump from a greater than 90 into a standard and they will take their time most of them will wait for their loan tenure to be over and then the extended tenure will kind of get them back into uh, you know a loan termination you know so that's how it is so we'll have to bide our time uh, and see you know how it, uh, how their individual loans run out in parallel obviously this is the new disbursements that we are doing our regular book which is at 82 will obviously keep on increasing and by end of the year i think you know uh, the the um, pre march 21 book should be a lower single digit got it so just a last question uh, you know so is it fair to assume that the stage 3 assets uh, in absolute terms okay which is 4.2 billion is picked out at current level or we feel that you know there will be some flow forward from this 1000 uh, crore book and it should ideally pick out in q3 nee hey, ranish uh, so uh, there is a nuance to the question you are asking and uh, you know i will just attempt uh, maybe i'm not able to communicate i am saying the flows could be there i am not saying they will not be there but hmm. the so called bad customers have peaked out if that is you know i'm just answering your question slightly differently the customers hmm. will i will i be stressed or as a institution will we be stressed to take a right of etc unlikely right now the way they are and the way the story goes they will drag themselves uh, towards the end of the tenure and that is how they will kind of exhaust themselves that is how it is going to work got it sir uh, good enough sir thank you very much sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of shweta daptardar from elara capital please go ahead Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So, a couple of questions. Uh, one being, so what is the incremental uh, cost of fund? Please use the handset mode. Uh, the audio is not clear from your line. Sure. Uh, is it better now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, sir, a couple of questions. One is, uh, what is the incremental benefit on cost of funds because of revision in uh, rating stands? And uh, just, uh, just uh, a follow-up there. Uh, so, 33 percent of our borrowing mix today is uh, coming from capital markets. So, uh, given that the shorter end of the curve and the uh, capital markets have been slightly tight of late, so do you see uh, any change of liability mix going forward? That's the first question. Okay. Uh, do you want me to answer the question? Uh... uh shweta or you want to put out your other question also okay uh, okay i'll go ahead and answer i'll go ahead and answer, I'll go ahead and, sure, answer sure. and then you can ask the uh, the next question basically the liability mix uh, our stated position is that we would want to improve on the uh, the exposure with the banks right uh, we would want to take it uh, closer to you know 75% uh, uh, over over a period of next uh, couple of quarters uh and uh, the capital market exposure should you know come down to around 25% or so uh having said that we do have interest uh, even on the capital market transactions uh, if you see in the current quarter also there have been uh, certain transactions that we have done uh, uh, uh you know uh, but when when we look at microfinance uh, space the primary funding is being done by the banks uh, given that we uh, originate a lot of uh, uh, lot of book which is uh, helpful for to meet the agri and the priority uh, requirements of the bank uh, they do tend to you know give us a uh, 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 good amount of uh, support on the funding side and that's what we would want to you know leverage on uh, 
the one thing which uh, which uh, should also play out in the second half of the financial year is a uh, uh, lot many more uh, you know ptc transactions and da transactions uh, is uh, what we feel will uh, will help us you know improve the share of the banks sure noted sir uh, so second question is on you mentioned in your uh, presentation and also uh, in the opening remarks that 46% of your new disbursements are coming from new customers so what has been the um, uh, strategy on the new customer acquisition front especially uh, where we are coming from you know the the, the transformational stage okay so uh, i'll give you a 60 second answer uh, you know uh, so what happens uh, shweta is the as far as the new when you look at the composition of a microfinance book our current distribution or the portfolio that we have about 33% comprises of customers who have a relationship only with spandana another 34% are customers who have a relationship with the spandana plus one more financer you know so this is about 67 68% if you go back to the vision 2025 we had laid out uh, along with the quarter four deck we had very clearly said that our our growth story will be customer acquisition led we are conservative or we will be conservative on ticket sizes uh, we are still not there we will be uh, you know walking uh, uh, towards that but this 66 67% which is a single lender relationship and a 1 plus 1 relationship we as a company want to take it at to a 80% 80 to 81% then 1 plus 1 plus one will be another 11 to 12% and then rest will be uh, single digit consciously on the field we are reaching out and trying to disburse more and more to customers who are new to us it, it could be a mix of the three books or two books that we have said but clearly our direction is either a direct single relationship or a one plus one we where we want to churn the existing base a little bit there are we have identified about 4 to 5 lakh customers where we feel that at some stage they will have to they will go or we will have to let them go a new customer set of customers entering your books is always a good way to refresh your portfolio because they come with a new uh, one they are obviously in geographies where their liabilities are less plus they are more current in terms of the way the jlg works so this is a part of a conscious strategy and that's why 46 of the 100 customers that we've disbursed in the last quarter are a new customers to uh, are new customers to uh, uh, you know to spandana we uh, will continue this approach for the next right until fy 2025 and that's how we kind of uh, projected our numbers sure sir So one last question from my side. So we are closer to book today. Um, you you just explained the customer acquisition strategy, and uh, we had the capital infusion happening in Q4 with gearing standing at uh, very favorable levels. So uh, where do you see the book now uh, from this six thousand odd number in next one to two years? So gearing is your question. Uh... Hmm, you know shweta uh, we are at i think 1.2x 1.2 uh, 2.1 or something anything south of 4 we will be comfortable that is the leverage we would want to carry which is a long way off obviously from where we are uh, so that's the ideal one that's our direction uh, the uh, the cap as i said the balance sheet and alas kashish to chip in the balance sheet as i said is pretty strong uh, directionally we are very clear in terms of which way we want to go ashish so uh, gearing uh, you know so gearing will be at uh, any number south of 4x is a good enough number for us but directionally that's the this thing this is right until fy 25 okay noted sir thank you so much for patiently answering the question thank you thank you
The next question is from the line of Samir Bhise from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a good quarter. Uh, you mentioned about OPEX. Uh, how long before we again start adding branches? Achha, so, uh, Samir, your question is, uh, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, maybe, uh, you're, you're asking when will we start the new, opening yes, new branch, yes. is that what yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so the, uh, the effort starts this quarter. This was, uh, I go back to our narrative. We said first two quarters will be consolidation. The growth story starts now. We will open, we have already a plan to open, uh, you know, branches between Q3 and Q4. All put together, we've projected uh, roughly about uh, 400 plus 160, 560 branches uh, all put together from now until FY25. Now for branches to deliver, we will have to ensure that, you know, we kind of uh, uh, open all of them max Q1 of FY25 for which we'll have to start the effort now. So we would want to get the maximum runway for every branch to kind of deliver and make meaningful contribution. Uh, the distribution, uh, sorry, the opening of new branches starts this quarter. I mean. Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, the staff cost is lower QOQ. Uh, was there an arrear angle in, in prior quarter? What is the arrear angle? I mean, uh, uh, this. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Samir, uh, basically we had some, uh, uh, some programs that we have run uh, between Q4 and Q1. Uh, which were uh, having those one-time payments, uh, and that's how the number for Q1 was higher. Uh, but right now, the number that we have is pretty much, uh, you know, the stabilized uh, kind of a uh, cost, employee cost for us. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thank you, and uh, all the best. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shripal Doshi from Equiris. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity and congratulations on, on the quarter. So, firstly, uh, my question was on the disbursements. So, while if we see in June quarter, we had already clocked in close to 900 crore of disbursements. Uh, then, uh, what led to the run rate sort of moderating in 2Q? So, uh, Shripal, look, uh, once again, sorry, I'm going back to my old uh, this thing. It are uh, two factors. One is uh, we, we are running multiple priorities and they will continue until the year end. Uh, priorities are more in terms of control, governance, uh, supervision, putting the risk and audit teams in place, uh, managing, uh, uh, acclimatizing the field to the new tech stack that we kind of rolled out to the field which will help us uh, do the supervision, control, uh, monitoring, etc. In a, in, a, in a good way. So uh, we had very clearly said that, you know, this is the pace that we will take, uh, which is, uh, you know, about 1,300 to 1,500 crores in quarter two, and then 2,500 and 3,500. So we are just following the narrative, which we thought uh, we are following the numbers that we had sought, uh, that we had. You have 61 seconds understanding of what will give us good enough time to invest in the areas that I have just about uh, spelled out to you. So got it. A part of the, it is a part of the plan. It will be a back end. Got it. So got it. Just wanted to check because if, if there was anything uh, specific that, that happened. So just ask that question. So the second question was on the liquidity front. So if you look at uh, while while on a conservative basis we are maintaining yeah, healthy liquidity, 30, but 30. going ahead by FY23 end or in normal FY24, what is the percentage of liquidity that we would want to maintain on balance sheet? Uh, sorry, Sripal, we lost you in between for uh, a couple of seconds. Are you asking what kind of liquidity we will be maintaining uh, by the year end? On balance sheet. Yeah, by the year end and in, in normal, in a business as usual year, that is FY24. Okay. Uh, we, um, she Lady on the line for the management has got disconnected. Request you all to please stay online while we reconnect them. Thank you.
and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen thank you for patiently waiting the line for the management is reconnected thank you and over to you sir uh hi shripal sorry um, i i just um, uh, respond to the question on the uh, how how we are going to look at the liquidity internally right. we do uh, ha so internally we uh, uh, we have a, a conscious decision that you know we will stay put uh, liquid uh, uh, from a balance sheet standpoint and uh, idea is to maintain you know uh, cash and bank of anything uh, north of uh, two months of our obligation so we will uh, be liquid uh, for for uh, some period of time actually this is something that uh, uh, is always good for for a, 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 a micro finance company to have enough and more liquidity uh, on the balance sheet so we will run it a little conservatively got it so uh, like there is in the presentation it's been mentioned that uh, there is a strategy to add another 1000 loan officers uh so so what is uh, i mean so so it will all be in 3q only and what is the uh, level of aum per loan officer that we are comfortable in a normal business as usual environment uh the normal aum per loan officer if it is anywhere between 100 and uh, between uh, 125 lakhs which is 1.25 crores is a decent number anything south of 1 crores Uh, crore is not a very exciting number which we are at this point in time any number which is around 1.5 crores is a great number to aspire so in a short term uh, right now what we've done is that the 1000 loan officers we have kind of allocated we've uh, slightly operational but we are uh, in the branches and the portfolio which is doing good we are trying to hit a uh, loan borrower uh, per Uh, borrowers for loan officer in the range of about 450 to 500 that's the destination model uh, so we have it's and separately i can take you take you through the numbers but it's a detailed one what we are trying to do is to ensure that at uh, in the next few quarters we start we get to a enterprise level average of about 1.25 to 1.3 crores and then onwards into 1.5 got it sir got it so uh, just uh, one last question on this new customer acquisition that we have done so uh, i mean where if you could give some color from the geography uh, point of view uh, is it from the newer geography or from the jo- from our uh, main geography such as odisha mp or is it from the new geographies no so we are mindful of the concentration and the fact that we can't be stacked into a specific geography so the acquisition is very secular uh, across the wherever we are one two in fact it is the other way around uh, we uh, we uh, shripal uh, what we uh, focus on is any branch which is not at a optimal level of aum that we would want is where we push more because that is for us to we we have to drive the profitability matrix as well so uh, all the new branches for example that we are going to open this quarter and the next quarter will all be only customer acquisition so you will see this you know this number kind of uh, either in the same range any number upwards of 40 is good uh, in terms of a distribution uh, we can i mean so that's the level that we are uh, going to drive in terms of your specific questions it's a secular one across all geographies wherever we start hitting the ceiling where we are not very comfortable is where we slightly tone down the customer acquisition number and then we focus on the existing customers got it so one last question uh, like you had answered this to a previous co- uh, participant but just from different angle so you said that you have 33% of the customers which are unique to spandana currently uh, and the thought process is to bring broadly to bring it down to close to 8 to 10% is that the understanding right no 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 sorry i don't think uh, you know let me re- repeat what i said Okay. our single lender relationship portfolio is 33% customers right 1 plus 1 which is with spandana and one more financer is 34% that put together is 67% this together from a 67 as an enterprise in the next 2 to 3 quarter we would want to take it to a 80% okay which means which means you will have to definitely take up the 33 to a 38 39 40 there is no other option and the other other piece also has to move up simultaneously got it sir got it sir yeah thank you thank you so much sir and good luck for the next quarter sir thank you shripal
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, good evening, sir, and congratulations on a good set of number. Uh, sir, first question, I think you had mentioned something about right backs. So if you can shed some light on, you know, what, because we have also done a lot of write-offs in the previous quarter. So how was the collection, if any, from those pool which we have already written off? and what is the expectation going forward and uh, second is uh, so this 97 and a half percent on the new book is uh, sort of still below you know what is your expectation um, you know from a uh, BAU point of view so what is sort of holding back uh, this book from behaving at a pristine uh, uh, collection efficiency quality sort of a metric uh, answer these two sir uh, hi Sarvesh uh, this is Ashish I'll uh, answer the first one and then I'll request Shalab to you know kind of uh, talk about the new book and how it uh, it is uh, uh, going to play out um, uh, so it, in, in terms of So in terms of uh, the collection from the uh, return of books, we had uh, 15 crores that we have collected in, in, in the current quarter. Uh, the way to look at it is, uh, uh, you know, if you have to go by the industry benchmarks, then anywhere between, uh, you know, uh, 10 to 20%, around 15% or so is the industry benchmarks uh, in terms of collections from the return of portfolio. Uh, over a period of uh, year and a half, uh, so one should one should expect uh, us to you know have at least uh, similar numbers, uh, if not better. Uh, uh, given that we are going to uh, make some uh, focused uh, drives uh, on the ground, uh, these numbers should be better in my mind. So uh, just to supplement, uh, the last quarter I think the last quarter uh, we've recovered about 15 crores from the right of book. The next two quarters, we have plans to recover about 40 crores minimum. Uh, we will do more than that. That's number one. Number two is uh, on your question about 97.5%. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, Sarvesh, uh, the gross collection efficiency, so deliberately, if you would have seen, we as a, as a team, we are trying to culturally bring about a change where the timely collection of money is very important, which is the net and the gross ideally should not be any gross. You know, ideally everything should come on time at the same place, on the day it is due. Right now we have a net collection efficiency of 97.5 as you said on the post April 21 book. The gross if I see, which is arrears, with arrears, you know, our collection efficiency is 105% of the same book. So uh, I deliberately sort of muted that entire narrative because when we speak to our teams, it is not about the 105, it is about the 97.5 moving to a 90, as I said, you know, upwards of 98.5 and uh, uh, greater than 99 is what we are aspiring to. So that is what we are, uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, pursuing. Uh, slowly, the net of 97.5, we anticipate uh, to see a figure upwards of 98.5 and a 99 uh, around about that number so uh, we've narrated we've given you both the numbers the 90, uh, the gross number also is 105 but then obviously it comes with a lag which is which might not be what a microfinance institution ideally should be uh, very very happy about so how soon do we expect to get to this uh, aspira aspirational number of 98.5 to 99.25 yeah, yeah, we we are targeting uh, uh, this quarter and the next quarter for all of whatever I have said. Anything beyond, uh, because now COVID is kind of done and settled. Uh, there we have a book which is now 82%. So there is no reason for us to really hit that number. Uh, and we obviously have started, uh, uh, you know, we've already started working with the field on the ground to ensure that, uh, you know, this is kind of, uh, you know, we kind of hit this because then it will be a perfectly BAU situation. Understood, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Shreda from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. 
so on disbursements uh, so you had highlighted uh, the trajectory uh, particularly for q3 q4 and total into which comes to around 8500 but on aum also we had guided around 8000 to 100 crores we buy uh, this year and this year right the audio is breaking from your line sir please check yeah is it audible yeah please go ahead yeah sir so sir i wanted to ask that on disbursement we guided around 8500 crore for the full year the numbers which we uh, uh, told for q3 q4 on so much but on when also uh, we had added for 8000 8200 crore of uh, closing aum by this year and is that right yeah that's right uh, given that our disbursement is uh, largely in the uh, second half and uh, the q4 is will be a higher number you know the aum uh, is likely uh, to you know close uh, Uh, north of 8000 crores uh, anywhere between 8000 and 8500 crores correct right. so uh, even if uh, we expect uh, say some flow through uh, in the 90 plus dpd uh, but as far as its share in the current book is concerned uh, maybe 90 dpd plus and 1 to 90 dpd the share in the book should should have topped out in this quarter is that correct assumption to make uh, so the share will keep dropping in the coming quarters because of the high growth now on percentage terms mathematically yes. mathematically absolutely yes uh, but we do expect uh, you know improvement from an uh, in, in absolute terms also is what we were trying to explain earlier in the call yeah that i got it sir yeah sir that that was the only question uh, congrats for this quarter on a very strong operating performance and wish you all the best for the coming quarters as well thank you so much thanks thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to mr shalab saxena for closing comments thank you and over to you sir uh, thank you very much uh, once again uh, to all the participants on the call it's uh, over the quarter when we reach out or when we have a chat with each one of you separately not everyone but you know whoever we manage to strike a conversation or vice versa we've had uh, we've had uh, um, good response and good feedback on various uh, um, you know initiatives that we would have taken there are many ideas that also uh, flow into us and thank you very much for kind of uh, giving us those uh, valuable piece of advice uh, we've set out on a mission uh, which is to get to the numbers but it is less about numbers more about how we do it it's while the destination counts but the process towards the journey towards the destination is very very important and that is what we are uh, embarked on we will ensure that we deliver quality we will ensure that we create an organization which uh, you know which people will be proud of and uh, thank you so you are an integral stakeholder to this whole journey and thank you very much for all the support uh, thank you very much thank you Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Spandana Sporty Financial Limited that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect